Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Table Talk. I'm your host, Jake Combs, and tonight, as you can see, we got a huge unboxing for Necromunda. Uh, most of these items we've picked up on our own, with a couple of them were actually sent to us by Games Workshop. Um, now, as always, um, anyone that's watched the show long enough will know that you know we regularly get things from Games Workshop as well as other vendors. And the only stipulation there is that we will review it, but it does not guarantee our opinions. Uh, so those remain ours and ours alone. Uh, but as far as what was actually sent to us, um, that would be the uh, Mercator uh, Nautical, uh, Nautica Siphoning Delegation. And then the House of Blades book. The rest of these items were actually picked up through uh, some recent trades I did uh, with some uh, local guys. So that is where most of this came from. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and open all of it because as you can see, most of it is still sealed in plastic. And then uh, take a look at what's inside. So to start off with, we're just gonna move these out of the way. So we have you know, a mixed bag. We have items from Forge World. We have items from Games Workshop proper. Um, so we're gonna start off with the Siphoning Delegation. Now the models themselves, to me they look more like they would fit in with like something like the Tau and less uh, with Necromunda. Um, and, and that could just be the aesthetic. I know like on Necromunda, um, it would, it's, even though the world is, uh, more spent, uh, producing munitions for the Imperium, the, the planet itself, it's, it would not be surprising to see, you know, some sort of aliens or mutants kind of running around, especially in the Ender Hive. And... Looking at these guys, these guys definitely do not look human. Uh, like I said, the way their aesthetics are look very Tau to me. Um, maybe it could just be the, the big hulking robotic brute in the back of the group. Now we're just going to break the seal. Now this will not be the first Forge World model I have will have put together uh, and painted. The um, the very first one they did for Necromunda, uh, Gore Halfhorn. He was actually my first Forge World model. Um, but in here we have a, a guide to building resin models and. Uh, um, basically everything that you need to know about assembly and gluing and painting and all that good stuff. Now from what I recall, uh, this model set became available as of last week. And so on one section we have a lot of our spindly parts uh, you know, very delicate looking pieces. Definitely going to need a bit of cleanup, especially with the, uh, the extra flash on there from the resin. And then like right here, we have some that basically filled in the gap in between. So we'll need to clean that out as well. But from what I understand, this is quite common when dealing with resin, but with uh, the Forge World models, you do get well, typically anyway, a very detailed uh, kit. And as we can see from the images, as well as these pieces like this, there is quite a bit of detail already on here. All right. And then as you can see, we also have our supports as well. Now, once you get this cleaned up as far as like all of the flash and things like that, then you will want 
to typically give them a little bit of a, a, a soapy bath. Uh, most people, from what I understand, typically will use stuff like Dawn, uh, you know, a gentle soap and then a toothbrush to just get all of the um, uh, drying agents or whatever it is that they, they coat these in uh, off so that way the paint holds them better. I know with uh, Gore Half One, when I painted him, um, I actually didn't do any of that and I had no issues. So it could have just been that I just got lucky or it could have been that um, that's actually pretty normal. Uh, he was the only one I've actually built and painted uh, from For Forge World, so I can't say for certain. Um, but I do really like the detail of these models. Uh, I mean, just looking at them, I can see a lot of opportunity for um, some kit bashing. And, but at the same time, you know, definitely want to make use of the models. Now, with the siphoning delegation, they do have some special ties to House Escher, uh, which is the House of Blades. And then, but they will work with any law abiding gang. Uh, so you don't actually have to play Escher in order to use them. Now what's interesting is looking at each card, uh, they don't actually have a score with them. Or not, not a score, but a points value. And so I would expect that... Um, okay, so it actually says right here, uh, rules for uh, the siphoning dele delegation can be found in the Book of Peril or the House of Blades. Now, Book of Peril, I actually already have a copy uh, and have slowly been started working on reading that. Um, House of Blades, obviously, is still sealed, uh, and so we have not. And so we're actually going to open that next. Now, with the Forge World models that we got as part of the trade that are still in blisters. We're going to take a quick look at them because you can see through the package, but we're not going to open them just because I'm not ready to start building them yet. All right. Now, one thing I love about the hardcovers from Games Workshop is you know, not just the quality, but we also have uh, the built-in bookmark, which comes in very handy, especially if you are uh, working with multiple books for different things. So we have you know that built-in bookmark right there. So you can actually mark the page where you left off, or if you're in the middle of playing a game and you want to look for a specific rule page, you can mark it that way, so that way you can get to it real easily. Um, but the House of Blades book, uh, like the other house books, um, this is the actual first one that we've received. Um, I do have um, a couple others. Uh, the book, the House of, or Book of Judgment, I believe it is, and uh, the, uh, I actually can't remember what, what the name of it is. It's the one for the Corpse Grinder Cult. Um, but I have yet to actually look through those. And uh, like I said, this is the first one we've actually received um, from Games Workshop as eh, without actually being part of a trade to collect other stuff. Um, but the first part of this, just like any rule book you're going to get is going to be full of lore, uh, the background on house Escher. And then we go into all the special rules of weapons that you can get, uh, special, um, units like the death maidens, uh, and wild runners, for example. And 
and uh, just as I'm flipping through, I do see that there are several uh, bounty hunters and such that are exclusive to this house. Um, and I would expect that each of the houses have their own exclusive ones. Uh, like the one I'm looking at right here is Betty the Banshee. Uh, and she has yet to receive a model from Forge World or Games Workshop. Uh, will she down the road? Probably. Um, but looking at her, it looks like she's kind of a cross between um, the Arcoflagellants from Blackstone Fortress and uh, someone in House Asher. So maybe, um, you know, their intention is for someone to basically kit bash her uh, ahead of time um, or something like that. Now, I don't know for certain that they're going to make every... Uh, bounty hunter and hired and hired scum in here um, an actual model like here we have Necrona the Revenant of series Escher house agent uh, she has some rules on there as well and she looks like she's kind of like a zombified version of uh, one of the death maidens so I can I can you know already see you know a pretty easy way of actually making her um, just with the the main death maiden right here because they look very similar. So definitely worth picking up one of these books uh, for whatever game you're playing. Uh, likewise, it would also uh, be beneficial to uh, you know pick these up to see, to basically learn uh, you know how your enemies are going to be playing so like you know say for instance if you are playing Goliath um, and you know that one of your opponents is going to regularly play Escher you know picking up one of these books might be a good idea so that way you can get an idea for you know what kind of loadouts they're, they're they might be playing uh, what kind of uh, hired guns they might be bringing things like that so that way you can plan ahead um, and you know they very well might be doing the same thing uh, with the House of Chains in, in that example but I love all the detail um, you know even at the back we have uh, details of the hive city itself um, you know the underhive the bottom the sump and then basically how it kind of connects everything together and then we have uh, a map of the planet of Necromunda itself so very cool very worth picking up uh, whether you play Escher or not in my opinion um, obviously if you are more of a casual player um, and you don't play Escher then I, you probably wouldn't want to pick one of these up uh, but if you're more competitive um, and you either are struggling against Escher or want to basically get a leg up, I definitely would recommend picking this up so that way you can uh, do a little bit of research on, on them. Now, as far as the stuff we've received in trades, we have the Van, uh, a Vansar gang. We also have Kador and Orlok. So I'm bringing those out here. some of the kind of expanded um, add-ons for each of the gangs. The only ones we are currently missing is for Vansar that is currently out, as well as um, the uh, Ogren gang, which is much newer. Now, from what I've been told, uh, I haven't seen anything to corroborate this, but someone was actually telling me that there is going to be a House of Shadow book release uh, in the coming months. Again, I haven't seen or heard anything outside of that conversation to suggest this is true. 
likewise I also haven't seen anything to suggest that it's not. Alright, so I uh, opened up Vansar. Now Vansar is one of the, mm -mm, those uh, gangs that I've always really enjoyed the aesthetic of. Um, just because they are very high tech, you know, they're more of a, you know, kind of your sci-fi uh, army, more so than any others. And what I really also really like is their energy shields, and those are pre-done for you, uh, so that we can actually see through them. You know, we have our bases. Looks like we have. <sighs> Enough for 10 models, including the leader. Uh, looks like three champions and then six gangers. And so we have two actual sprues in here. And it looks like. Okay, so each sprue is the same. So you're going to be basically using each one of these to make uh, each of those models. And some models are basically going to share pieces between the others. Um, so definitely a, a good way to do it as far as, uh, you know, being economical. There, I mean, you are using a lot of the plastic real estate as well to, uh, you know, put as many pieces as possible um, in there at one time. Now... With Vansar, other than you know, like the the tubes and cables and stuff that are connected, it, they're not as detailed as some of the others because you know they're made to look more sleek. Uh, you know, these guys basically are paying for their firepower, um, where others would might be scavenging, um, you know, including their armor and things like that. From what I remember of the original version of Necromunda, uh, Vansar used, uh, I, again, I don't know if this is true because I have yet to play them um, or build them in Necromunda, um, at least the new version. But in the original edition, my memory is that uh, the Vansar typically were worth more points, but their weapons were more deadly, more accurate. Uh, so you'd have a smaller gang of Vansar running around versus a larger gang of, you know, Goliath or Escher or one of the others. Um, but, you know, it comes, it comes to be a balance um, between the two. You know, do you want more firepower, more people firing, or do you want better firepower? Um, now, I am assuming that this is probably going to be the same type of setup. I mean, just looking at it though uh, the cotter box set is also 10 and um, as is orlock so maybe um there's more of a balance than there used to be not certain uh in time will tell on that one whoa all right so next we're gonna go ahead and do cotter and then once once we do cotter we're actually going to open up the new box of redemptionists now Redemptionists uh, were one of those gangs that, uh, at least in the previous iteration, were more of their own separate thing, but kind of affiliated with Cawdor, uh, you know, and with the new version of Necromunda out, it seemed that Cawdor would end up um, being part of it more because the similar aesthetics and uh, um, mentalities. Now, just like with the Vansar box, we have two identical sprues in here. Uh, we have some vicious looking crossbows. Uh, you know, these guys are more about scavenging uh, than most of the other gangs. So they're using bits and pieces and kind of cobbling together their whole uh, aesthetic. 
but definitely some very cool stuff. Um, but with the Redemptionists, you know, they're more of the uh, zealot type. Uh, then we have our bases as well, same size as the Vansar. Then we have our assembly guide with, it looks like there are several variation options uh, along the way so that way you can uh, make a more unique gang, especially if you buy more than one box. Um, because as your gang goes on and evolves, you know, having a second box would definitely be beneficial because then uh, you can either try new loadouts and you know have it fit with uh, the whole WYSIWYG mentality. Um, or you know if one of your gangers dies, you know you don't want to be using the exact same model ne next time you play. Um, just for realism's sake. Now, of course, you know, those casual gamers that uh, are not that diehard, that's not really going to matter because, you know, at that point, it's just a, a ganger to replace the dead one. So now, with the Kato Redemptionist, from what I remember, uh, this came out about three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago. We got our assembly guide. Um, and flipping through it, there's a lot less uh, variation to the models. And they are very distinct, uh, so you're less likely to um, need multiple boxes. I would expect that um, the Redemptionists are going to be more elite, so that they are probably worth more points, which is why you only get six in a box instead of ten. Uh, and the bases look a little bit bigger on these guys. And then with these ones, it's two unique spurs. Um, you know, less cobbled together, more organized as far as their armaments, their, uh, their, their robes, you know, definitely a lot cleaner. So these guys are definitely the higher echelon of uh, the Cador, but definitely cool, some cool stuff. And actually, never mind, I am wrong because as soon as I rotated it, I realized um, some pieces that I thought were unique are not because they're actually on both. So it is two duplicate screws again, but some very cool stuff. Um, definitely looking forward to building these guys because uh, the Redemptionists were by far one of my favorites as far as the aesthetic. Um, didn't really play them much in the original, but definitely looking forward to giving these guys a go. Um, all right, so next we're gonna do the Orlock followed by the Orlock Arms Masters and Wreckers. Now, based on those other three boxes, I expect to see that we have two identical sprues, which we do. Now with Orlock, they definitely have a much more unified uh, wardrobe and uh, armaments. Where, like I said, you know, Cador, it's more kind of cobbling things together. Uh, definitely a lot more detail on these guys than some of the Vansar. And I think that the assembly guide, um, even though it's more simple because there's fewer pages, um, I actually think that uh, the imagery for it is, is much better defined than the other ones. Um, so that's definitely going to help. And then we have the bases as well. But looking at them, you know, we still have a lot of great detail, even with them uh, being a little more simplistic compared to Cador. 
um, but less so than Vansar. Now, as far as our next episode is concerned, uh, next time we will be doing the uh, New General's Handbook for Age of Sigmar, as well as the Gaunt's Ghost Models for 40k, and we might just have uh, some other uh, uh, 40k goodies to go over as well. Uh, from what I understand, we do have something on the way. Um, I just don't know exactly uh, what all is involved in that. So uh, with Orlocks, Arms, Masters, and Wreckers, we have uh, one unit who's on a jet pack or jump pack. Now let's take a look. So it looks like, once again, uh, two identical sprues. So unless uh, units are sharing pieces, I mean, you could very well build two of the uh, uh, jump booster guy, and then the arms master and his arc hammer. Okay, and I see the that there are two, or actually three wreckers. On the ground that look like they have jetpacks, but so depending on how you base them, you could potentially put three of them in the air. Now with these ones, uh, it looks like the main bodies themselves have less detail than uh, the regular Orlock game gang did, but the same general aesthetic. Um, I really like the Cyber Mastiffs, and what's interesting is the heads of them look honestly more like Skaven heads than actual dog heads to me but uh, like when you see the full model it definitely does look like kind of a, a, a half dog half robot and then with this one we do have some varying bases but unlike the other boxes those bases are not in their own package so you, you will have a greater chance of losing them that's why I'm putting them all back right away that way I can try to minimize potential loss there alright so what we're going to do now is we're going to go and take a look at the other Forge World models that we have again these all came through trade. I know some of them are currently not available on the Forge World website. Um, actually, most of uh, the Bounty Hunters and Hired Hands are not available through Forge World currently. Uh, but you know, with Forge World, you always kind of go through waves. Um, so we have Belladonna, which... Uh, for a long time, I thought she was uh, the same as Mad Donna, which she actually is not. I mean, she, they both have big hair, but uh, so far, I don't think that we've seen a Mad Donna uh, model, unless Belladonna is meant to replace her, um, but I don't think so. Uh, but the assembly on it is quite simple, uh, basically four pieces you're putting together. We have Slate and Merdina, uh, Orlock Road Boss with another Cyber Mastiff. So definitely looking forward to him. We, anytime that we have uh, those pets, I definitely want to uh, have as many of them as we can, especially the ones that are more unique. Then we have uh, Grendel Grendelson, a squat bounty hunter. 
uh, which I find hilarious because uh, outside of Blackstone Fortress, there are no squats available in 40k. I don't know if there's any rules for them with the Astra Militarum or not, but uh, we don't really have any models. Um, and so, you know, I expect down the road we are going to see more squats uh, coming back. But I do like that they're making, you know, more unique squats like in Blackstone Fortress and Necromunda now. Uh, there are you know, at least one other squat uh, character, I believe two if I remember correctly. Um, one's a, a dwarf looking guy who's uh, basically got boxes full of ammo. And then one is a cook. Um, so definitely keep, keep an eye out for those. Those are ones that I'm more interested in getting than some of the others. Uh, and then we have Ammo Jack and Dome Runner 2-pack. So I'm sure if we read uh, the Book of Peril, we'll find out why those two go together. Uh, I suspect that you can't take one without the other. We have Eros Slagmist, Bounty Hunter. Uh, kind of looks like he belongs with the, the Siphoning Delegation. He very well might be somehow affiliated, um, but again, we'd have to go and look into the Book of Peril to uh, learn more about him. Now this one, this is uh, the first hired gun set, uh, which gave us three models. So specifically, we have Yolanda Scorn, Grub Targuson, and Magdog Mono uh, Hive Scum. So Yolanda is an Escher, Mad Dog, looks like he just goes wherever the money is, and then Grub um, used to be a member of the, the Merchant Guild. And it looks like, based on his description, uh, he's a little tainted by chaos because um, he's got a, a, a basically a lump that grew on his back, and then all of a sudden it started talking. But looking at the models themselves, um, this these casts actually feel a lot. Uh, smoother than those in the delegation so I'm thinking that these probably have more of the coating on there that need to be removed but definitely some cool stuff I, I definitely like the look of the models especially how unique their appearance are um, so you're not you know just fielding the same stuff with a slight modification you know they are definitely very unique so definitely got some cool stuff there and that leaves us with our last four boxes uh, the first two uh, go with Goliath and Escher so we're gonna go ahead and open those first because uh, they are tied to the gangs So this is the Goliath Stimmers and Forgeborn. So this one, we do have different sized bases, but we're in one bag together. So I'm assuming that means they learned from their mistake with the last one. And then we do have two identical sprues again, which is interesting. Uh, it looks like there's two different stimmers in here uh, with some slight variation, but a majority of it's still the same. So that explains why uh, we're, we have the two same sprues because we're gonna be using a lot of the same parts for different guys. Now with these, you know, with the muscles, the 
the actual you know the chains and the spikes and things like that definitely got a bit more detail than you do on some of the other models uh, so something to look forward to there and then uh, these guys will definitely go right along nicely with uh, my goliaths that um, I actually still need to build um, so something to look forward to And then as far as uh, content is concerned, this week uh, we finally finished our review of Hive War. Uh, so we're gonna actually have that published uh, sometime this week. With it, we're also going to include our thoughts on the uh, Siphoning Delegation and the House of Blades. Death Maidens and Wild Runners, uh, you know, Death Maidens themselves were just fantastic looking models, and one of them for the aesthetic alone. Uh, have no idea how they're going to play or anything about that. Um, oops, I just dropped that. Let's see. And again, uh, identical sprues. And looking at the pieces, it looks like we have pieces to make uh, multiple of the, the cats. Um, so on the back, it only shows two, but on the front, it shows four. Um, and the main difference between them is just choosing a different head or you could choose the same head, I'm assuming. But definitely a lot of detail with these ones, especially with uh, those death maidens and the animals. And looks like there's just a lot more going on here than uh, the other ones had. And I really like the, uh, the Escher uh, bows and arrows uh, for using for their, their battles. Uh, you know, basically makes me think of, um, you know, the Amazons from, uh, Greek mythology and that they uh, uh, were definitely very well rounded as far as uh, you know, their knowledge and various ways of killing people. So next we have the Lutheran Pattern Excavation Automata um, which is commonly referred to as the Ambot. Now, for those that play the video game, uh, Underhive Wars, from what I've been told, there are quite a few of these running around, but in the lore, there's not very many. But it, I think it's just one of those uh, repeatable missions that you can use to uh, uh, you know, build credit and XP consistently. Uh, once again, two of the same sprues, uh, but obviously using some of the same parts, you're, you're gonna be doing different poses with them. And surprisingly, on the big pieces, like the legs and the chest plates and back plates and things like that, there's not nearly as much detail as I thought there would be, but the smaller pieces like the heads, um, the servos, the wires, the pipes, uh, tubing, things like that, have a ton of detail on them. And it's a much more complex assembly guide than most of the others that we see. And I do see some spots where you actually have some variation available, so you, you can actually get multiple packs of these and load them out in different ways so that way you have unique ambots. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I honestly was expecting there to basically be two sprues, one for each robot, and them to be unique, and that's basically it. But obviously, we've seen that I'm wrong. All right, so this one is Cal Jericho and Scabs. Now, uh, Cal Jericho does have uh, his Necromunda books available. Um, I believe Sinner's Bounty was the newest one, if I remember correctly. So 
So with this one we have one sprue to cover both miniatures. Seems like the sprue could have been smaller, uh, occupying less space, uh, you know, using less plastic, or you could have you know easily added maybe like a third character in the pack uh, to fill up some of this other space with. But with Jericho himself and Scabs, you know, they both have a good amount of detail. Um, And I see that there's a plasma rifle for to go on Scab's back. Just trying to figure out where that actually went, um, just looking at it. But good amount of detail. I I like that um, you know they're using some unique weaponry. That's not very common, especially uh, Kyle's sword itself. And then picture on the back shows him fighting some Deluxe. Very simple one page per character instructions. All right, and then lastly, we're gonna be looking at the gang stronghold. Now ideally, if you can afford it, you know, you'd want to get you know at least two or three of these to really build out your gang's base. So let's just see how much we have in here. So it looks like this sprue is a duplicate and actually so we have the same sprue duplicated in here four times and then one unique sprue. So we're just going to take out those two themselves. So we have our walkways, um, some uh, barricades, walls to hide behind, things like that. I like that the plastic on these is much thicker, so it's gonna be definitely much more durable once it's built. And there's already a lot of uh, wear and tear on the pieces, uh, you know, bullet holes, dents, things like that. This one looks like we've got some sort of vat going on. And then some sort of a uh, kind of hatch that's going to go on top. So it looks like that's kind of like maybe a uh, like a water tower of some sort. And then you also have the a uh, kind of a, a lookout tower at the top. But definitely some cool stuff. Uh, Honestly, looking at the pictures, I thought there was going to be a lot more detail on this uh, than there is, but it still looks like it's going to be a lot of fun to paint, a lot of fun to build. So looking forward to that. And I can see that some parts of it are definitely going to go quite well with uh, my uh, Shadow War Armageddon box because uh, we still have the terrain from that. So uh, definitely going to go together quite nicely. Uh, but that's it for tonight. Uh, like I said, next time we're going to be going over the General's Handbook for 2021 for Age of Sigmar, the uh, Gaunt's Ghosts 
40k models, the new ones, and then we should be seeing some other 40k goodness coming out as well. So things to look forward to. Uh, but again, that's it for tonight. Thank you guys for watching. I will catch you all next time. Good night.